We're going to have a look now at simple linear regression and how it works. You will probably have come across the term correlation before and this measures the strength and direction of the linear relationship between our two quantitative variables. So simple linear regression is like an extension of correlation and is used to model the relationship between our two variables. Simple linear regression fits a straight line to our data which is the best fit straight line for our data and it's with this straight line that we model the relationship between our two variables. So now we'll take a look at the equation that gives us the best fit line for our data. Our equation reads as y hat equals b0 plus b1 times x and this will generate for us the straight line that best fits our data. So I'll just explain how each of the components of our line are calculated. B1 is the slope of our line and is calculated by multiplying OR, which is our correlation value, by SY, which is the standard deviation of our Y variable, divided by SX, which is the standard deviation of our X variable. B0 is our intercept and is calculated using Y bar minus B1 multiplied by X bar, where Y bar is the mean of our Y values and X bar is the mean of our X values. I'm going to use the same example that I used in the slides on correlation, where six people were questioned and we recorded the heights and weights of each of them, and these are the values we got. We worked out the mean of our height values, denoted by X bar, to be 67.5 inches, and we found the mean of our weight values, denoted by Y bar, to be 119.83 pounds. The standard deviation of our height values worked out to be 5.17 inches and the standard deviation of our weight values was 19.08 pounds. Our correlation value denoted by OR was 0.910, which indicates a strong positive linear relationship between our variables. We'll work out our B1 value first, which is our slope, and again we calculate this using OR multiplied by SY divided by SX. We just plug in our values that we worked out on the previous slide and this gives us 0 0.910 multiplied by 19.08 divided by 5.17 to give an answer for B1 of 3.3596. Next we'll show how to work out our B0 value. B0 is our intercept and we calculate this using Y bar minus B1 times X bar. Plugging our values in again, we get 119.83 minus 3.3596 times 67.5, which gives us a value of minus 106.943. So we go back to the equation for the best fit straight line, which is y hat equals b0 plus b1 times x. Now that we have these values worked out, we can fill them into our equation to give us y hat equals minus 106.943 plus 3.3596 times x. We'll take a look at the scatter plot of our data and what our best fit line looks like. So here we have the scatter plot of weight versus height. Our line here is our best fit line and we worked out the equation of this line to be y hat equals minus 106.943 plus 3.3596 times x. If we were asked to draw this line by hand, we would do this by filling into our equation every value in the range of our x variable. So in our case, we would plug every value from 62 up to 75 into our line equation and plot the values that we calculated. We'll talk through the interpretation of our line and what our components mean. So we know that b1 represents our slope. A general interpretation of B1 is that for every unit increase in X, our estimated change in average Y is B1. So in terms of our example, for every inch that our height value increases, our estimated change in our average weight is 3.3596 pounds. Next we'll take a look at B0, which is our intercept. Again, a general interpretation for B0 is that when our X value is 0, B0 is the estimated value of average Y. In the case of our example, this would mean that if our height value is 0, then minus 106.943 would be our estimated value for average Y. 
Sometimes, though, this isn't going to be a sensible interpretation to make. In the case of our example, what we're saying here is that if a person's height is zero, then their average weight value is minus 106.943, which doesn't make any sense as a person cannot have a height of zero. This can be a sensible interpretation to make in some cases, but it's important to consider what is being recorded when discussing our interpretations. Now we'll take a look at how we can use our regression line for predictions. Here we have the equation for our best fit line. We can use this equation to compute prediction values for our y variable. We can do this by plugging in different values of x into our equation and observing the value of y that we get. It's really important to note that we should never choose values of x that are outside the range of our data. For example, if we look at our x variable height, our lowest value is 62 inches and our highest value is 75 inches. This means that if we are choosing values of x for predictions, they can be no lower than 62 and no higher than 75. If we go back to our example, we worked out our regression equation to be y hat equals minus 106.943 plus 3.3596 times x. We choose x to be equal to 70, which is suitable as it falls within the range of our data. Plugging 70 in, we get y hat equals minus 106.943 plus 3.3596 times 70, which gives us a value of 128.229 pounds. So if our height is 70 inches, the model predicts that our weight will be 128.229 pounds. The last thing we'll have a look at are residuals. All residuals are are the difference between the observed value from our study and the predicted value from our model. So we go back to our example and choose the first person from our study who had a height value of 68 inches and a weight of 98 pounds. We have our observed y value so we need to plug in our x value to get our predicted value. So here we have 68 plugged into our equation, which gives us a predicted value of 121.5098 pounds. So now that we have our observed and predicted values, we take our predicted away from our observed, giving us a residual value of minus 23.5098. The development of these resources was supported by the NDLR and the Department of Mathematics and Statistics at NUI Maynooth, and they will be available from the following websites.